When planning my physics of sports video, I started by determining which sport I wanted to teach. I settled on throwing a frisbee backhand because I'd played ultimate for UC Davis and I felt confident that I could do it correctly. Then I looked at all of the different instructional pieces that I wanted to show in order to throw the disc correctly. I looked at which physics was explained in each of those. I took each of those 10 instructional ideas and made a post-it note for each element that I wanted to show. Some elements had multiple post-it notes because I wanted to show a slow motion video as well as an image, as well as a zoomed in version. Next, I took video clips to calculate from. This clip found the total velocity of the disc, and this clip showed me how long it was in my hands when throwing. I used that information to calculate all of my pieces for the video. Let's check out the final product. Nick Williams, this is how you throw a frisbee. Ultimate Frisbee is a great team game, but it's difficult to hit a moving target in stride. Let's learn how. Start in a stable stance with weight split evenly between both feet. Your center of mass should be over your base so that you're fully balanced and don't fall over. Grip the disc firmly with a thumb on top and four fingers underneath in a hard fist. The more power you exert on the disc, the more control you will have of it so that all of your arm's effort goes into moving the disc forwards. Step out to the side so that your body's momentum is fully transferred outwards and your shoulders have full movement. This will also help you step around a defender so that he's unable to block the throw that you make. Your dominant foot should step 90 degrees to the side, with your non-dominant foot serving as a pivot. Both toes should point at the sideline so that you have full movement of your arm and shoulders towards your throw. Pull the disc all the way backwards past your back shoulder to maximize the distance that you can then pull it forwards. As you throw, twist your hips, then shoulders, and finally your arm. The more of your body mass you can put into the throw, the more momentum will be transferred to the disc and the faster and further you'll be able to throw it. If you only throw with your arm, you're only able to use 5.7% of your total body mass or about four kilograms. However, if you're able to throw with your body and your arm, you can use 52.5% of your mass, or about 38 kilograms. Since momentum is conserved, the more mass you can put into before the throw, the faster the disc will go afterwards. The disc has a mass of 175 grams and leaves my hand in 0.17 seconds for a total force of 15 newtons or about 3.4 pounds. The disc has a high percentage of its mass in its outer plastic rim, giving it a high moment of inertia. This means that once it starts spinning, it will keep spinning for a long time without stopping. To maximize the rotational velocity, snap your wrist as you throw. Since you're applying a lot of torque to the outside of the disc, if you release it flat, it may wobble in the air and then turn over with the wind. Instead, release the disc facing downwards at about 16 degrees. When you release the disc at this 16 degree angle, the disc will naturally straighten itself and fly straight and true. Throw the disc 11 degrees above the horizontal, with a horizontal velocity of 14.4 meters per second and a vertical velocity of 2.8 meters per second for a total velocity of 14.75 meters per second or about 33 miles per hour. The disc will travel 32 meters horizontally and rise to a maximum height of three meters vertically. Without air resistance, the path of the disc would be a perfect parabola. However, air resistance is significant, causing a backwards net force and a parabola that's steeper on the way down. There's a net acceleration backwards due to air resistance and down due to gravity. Because the disc catches a lot of air, there's a large lift force that counterbalances gravity, leading to an overall net acceleration downwards of only 1.5 meters per second squared, instead of the expected 9.8 meters per second squared. Air resistance reduces the horizontal component of velocity, causing the disc to slow and fall steeper. Release the disc while your receiver is 10 to 15 yards away from you, allowing time for the receiver to run onto the disc and catch it in stride. By catching up to the disc, the receiver increases the time of the catch, which reduces the force. This means that the only force necessary is that to stop the rotation of the disc. Time of catch can also be increased by pulling the frisbee backwards. In summary, throw the disc with 3.4 pounds of force at an 11 degree angle at 
33 miles per hour. Happy frisbeeing!